but it's, it has some difficulty. And most of all, the above operator is a vector operator. So uh, each component of the, uh, the operators uh, has to be mixed uh, under the Lorentz transformation. On the other hand, each of matrices A1, A2, so on, is independently well defined. Uh, this discrepancy uh, uh, say, uh, tells us that we cannot interpret matrices as derivative operator naively. For example, the product of A1, A, A1 and A2 is well defined, but the, the product of two derivative operators uh, contains many components of derivative. Uh, in order to resolve such difficulty, uh, we have to introduce a principal bundle uh, with the fiber of which is Lorentz group. Uh, the smooth function on that principal bundle is locally the function which depends on the space-time coordinate and Lorentz group coordinate. So it is in the regular representation. Uh, then we define derivative operators on that functional space as uh, this, uh, this product. And here's the uh, usual covariant derivative and this is this is a matrix element of a uh, vector representation. And, and by using this operator, each of this, uh, do, uh, this uh, say, the rest of the operator is well defined globally and belongs to the endomorphism of the functional spaces. Uh, a more detail, uh, consider the rigorous uh, consider the function of regular representation. And an important feature of the regular representation is that uh, if one considers the tensor product of some regular, uh, some irreducible representation and regular representation, it is isomorphic to uh, the, the direct sum of regular representation, okay? Uh, this, uh, this, is, this is the isomorphic uh, Concrete, concrete expression of isomorphism, and here the matrix element of a, a irreducible representation where it works as a Krebs Golden coefficient. And so, oh, oh sorry. So, this uh, the rest operator is a scalar operator of acting on the smooth function of principal particles. Uh, uh, therefore, we 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 expand a matrix to the derivative of infinite degree uh, on uh, this functional space, and there, here the derivative is in the space-time direction and fiber one direction. Uh, the derivative in fiber one direction is equivalent to the Lorentz generator. So. So uh, this is the expression of expansion. And we further expand each coefficient fields of regular representation to those of various representation according to Peter Wilde theorem. The advantage of the in, uh, operator representation is uh, that the equation motion of the matrices uh, is interpreted as a rich flat condition. So, uh, curved space time uh, emerges as a classical solution a uh, consistent way. And we can also show that 
the fluctuation on this solution is field living on this rich fluctu particle. And second advantage is that a part of symmetries, a part of unitary symmetries at the matrix module contains a U1 diffeomorphism local Lorentz symmetries. And then, uh, uh, then the uh, especially around the front but front, uh, mode with lower degrees of derivative uh, this A F and E and omega is uh, can be identified as gauge beam and bearbind fluctuation and spin connection respectively. Uh, other features are uh, listed here. Uh, for example, and uh, the effective action of in in written in the form of uh, multi-local action uh, mentioned uh, in Kawaisan's uh, talk. Uh, but but uh, the most uh, relevant features uh, in my talk is the last one. And if, uh, there are infinitely many massless fields of various representations. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, the gate symmetry are uh, the corresponding gate symmetry is very complicated, so it is unclear they are physically meaningful degrees of freedom. Uh, we analyze this aspect by studying the bosonic part in the front background. Uh, first, well, I, I give you uh, some setting, uh, some setting and simplification. Uh, we focus on zero modes with respect to the boundary dependence. So uh, the coefficient fields they do not depend on the Lorentz group coordinate. Uh, and un un this undressed part uh, is written as large A. And we also deploy a new group technique, semi classical limit, uh, namely replacing the derivative with D numbers and committed as a is turned to pause a bracket. So we ignore the anti commutator which which ensures the heuristic. But but a commit normal commutator is taken account as a Poisson bracket. And and in my talk uh, some uh, unfamiliar notation uh, uh, is is written, and first, uh, symmetrized indices is, uh, is written a uh, 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 single single symbol, and the same Greek letters uh, denotes uh, the sim the symmetrized indices as well, and and the end product of derivative or uh, moment of p is written by by this single symbol. And all Lorentz generator is the same. And, and in field theories, higher spin gate symmetry is written uh, by the field, which is double trace space. And the transformation is realized by a uh, gauge parameter, which is trace space. Uh, we would like to find out the same symmetry in the matrix model because the symmetry it, uh, the symmetry has to uh, remove the longitudinal components. Uh, with a naive parameterization, we take matrices as a background derivative and uh, the coefficient fields uh, which which has S in this. But these transformations fail to eliminate longitudinal components because, because uh, this coefficient field has no totally symmetric part. Uh, mu1 to mu s minus 1 is symmetric, but a, a and mu are not symmetric. So this component contains a hook, hook type part. Uh, 
so we we can uh, we we want to remove the, this hook type part, and so in a uh, so I introduce the, the additional gauge parameter. Uh, if if we hook write hook part by a uh, b b a comma mu is my plan. Uh, its transformation row is uh, written written here. And the, the important point is that we 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 remove this B as by this new gauge parameter. Uh, so so the type part can be eliminated completely. <coughs> However, this new gauge parameter induces a uh, uh, gauge variation, uh, which is which cannot be uh, absorbed so far. So some additional field required. So we introduce some auxiliary field omega and corresponding gauge new further new gauge parameters. Uh, here we decompose the new field as uh, some two two row two row type part and the others. Uh, the transformation rows are written here, and the the point is again, and uh, the two row type field type part can be eliminated by gauge transformation completely. And other other the, as for the other part, the, uh, the transformation of it is uh, just uh, the same as the derivative of ro, ro, uh, original field. So so we uh, we can be written a uh, omega uh, square bracket a h slash c is can uh, is written by a original field by imposing the generalized torsion free condition. We impose uh, this condition. So, so there are no independent degrees of freedom in omega. Uh, in this case, uh, again, uh, it, there, there is a gauge variation uh, which is not absorbed in any field. So we, we we have to introduce some further auxiliary fields, and we repeat the procedure, uh, introducing uh, some auxiliary fields, and the gauge transformation row one is analyzed. And as a result, we conclude that that uh, this the two type two row the two row type part of the each auxiliary field can be removed by gauge transformation, while the other part can be written in the lower rank field, uh, imposing the general torsion free condition. Uh, the uh, the first the first line of equations is the gauge transformation of the two row type part, and the second line is the general torsion free condition. Uh, as, as for the highest rank field and two two row uh, two row of S Y S minus one boxes, uh, we have no no gauge parameter to remove it. Uh, however, the gauge uh, general torsion free condition for it can be solved uh, explicitly. The gauge variation for it is consistent. This uh, this is just right that the spin connection can be written with the fear line through torsion free condition. Uh, uh, as a result, uh, the suitable parameterization which which has uh, the manifest higher spin symmetry is written by 
the original fees and plus uh, some official fees. Uh, you, uh, here, using the gauge transformations and generalized torsion free conditions, it can be written with totally symmetric part of the originary fields. So, uh, so that the, uh, the bit below, below equation is the conclusive conclusion. Uh, furthermore, there is a crystal gauge symmetry holding the above gauge fixing. So uh, we we can we can remove the longitudinal components of the, this totally symmetric fields. the single equation of matrix is real to this equation of the field because uh, each each term of of derivatives uh, uh, must vanish. But we find that the among equations only the S minus ones and the S ones is trivial and uh, is non trivial. The others are identical zero. And furthermore, the S minus one S minus one equations can be derived from S S one by taking a derivative of anti symmetry in the indices. So the, the equations of motion for matrices is interpreted as uh, the, that single equation for the field. This is a bit different from the front star field. Across the equations of motions. Uh, rewriting the equations of motion, uh, this, that, that equation can be written in terms of the generalized curvature, uh, which, which has the two the representation of this, this young diagram. Uh, this, uh, it is known that uh, that is the old only gauge invariant quantity without the trace rate conditions. And, and we indeed have no such trace rate conditions in the matrix model, and it, it, is, it is natural in a, in a sense. Uh, but, uh, so in conclusion, the highest mean field in the matrix model with the operator interpretation represent the general curvature rather than from their fields. Uh, so so uh, so far we ignore the interaction term completely and to even in, as for the kinetic term and uh, it has S derivatives. So the dynamics is uh, still uh, remains to be analyzed. And here's the summary. And we have studied the gauge symmetry of higher speed fields that, that emerges in the 2 b matrix model with the operator interpretation. In order to equip the appropriate gauge symmetry, we have to introduce auxiliary fields of non trip totally symmetric representation. Uh, however, a part of them can be written with totally symmetric fields, while the rest part can be removed by each transformation. And we have still, and moreover, we have still residual gate symmetry that remove the longitudinal components of the totally symmetric fields. And so we, so we have a healthy higher spin field. Uh, as far as we focus on the kinetic term of each equation of motion, and the fields is generalized coverages, not from star fields. Um, there are many open questions, and 
for example, does the homogeneous term in gauge transformation, which which is completely ignored in my calculation, uh, causes any problem? Uh, or what is the physical meaning of the generalized curvature in the matrix model? And, the, and, and most of all, what about the fields in the gen general class, which depends on the bundle coordinates? Uh, this is the biggest problem. Uh, uh, my talk is over. Thank you. How do you accommodate values? In this interpretation, basically, uh, fermion degrees of freedom is, is interpreted as matters completely. So that when we discuss the geometry, uh, the fermion degrees of freedom is totally branded. Uh, you don't consider like superconnection, I see. Uh, uh, I, actually, I'd like to consider the fermions as a super fraction, but, but uh, that that analysis is mm, uh, not proceeding. That, that is one of the future work. I, I was a bit confused in the first part of your talk because I mean, the gauge symmetries are well defined in, in your framework, so there's nothing you can do about it. And then you introduced some auxiliary fields but then you remove them again. So, so in the end of the day, it's the statement that the original framework, you can remove all the longitudinal degrees of freedom, at least in the sector that you considered. So is that true or not? Or, or did you add something extra? I, I, I was confused by adding extra degrees of freedom. Are they there or not? Uh, at least, uh, uh, according to my 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 work, uh, uh, we in order to see the ex explicit uh, higher spin symmetry, and we we have uh, we should introduce some orbital fields, and and if we uh, if we consider uh, the the, op the operator without any auxiliary field, then uh, it, uh, it means that the, we we fix uh, the the most of higher spin gauge already. But, but the question is, can you remove the longitudinal degrees of freedom in the original model? Yes, yes or no? I. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, uh, we, we, uh, minimally, uh, okay, economical expression of this, uh, this error longitudinal component killing gate symmetry, uh, is that this, this, uh, uh, this parameterization. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, uh, in conclusion, auxiliary fields is not uh, necessary, yeah. but uh, but we have to parameterize the highest we feel this this combination. Of fields. Your I take in in that all possible structures. Yeah. Uh, so what do you mean by parameterization? Uh, parameterization, uh, it, it means really. Uh, I, uh, so, how, how I say it? Uh, okay. Physically, physically meaningful higher spin fields is it, uh, is entered as the matrix matrices as this form. So, uh, 
uh, only for, for example only this uh, this sector is not uh, is uh, not uh, if this one was the only first two term, this is uh, 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 this uh, the higher spin symmetry is not uh, C.